welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you're up, you're notified every time I upload a new video. Now this channel is based on lifestyle. So today we are going to be making Ghana sugar bread. That's right. You heard me. Ghana sugar bread. Ghana sugar bread is normally served with anything from tea, hot cocoa, milo, or any form of porridge that you'd like. So today we're going to go be going over my personal recipe and how I make it step by step. So stay tuned. And don't forget to hit the like button and comment down below if you have any questions. So I have right next to me my stand, my KitchenAid stand mixer. And that's what I'm going to be using today to um, mix the bread because it's easier to make the dough with this mixer for me. If you don't have this regular your hand and mixing it in a mixing bowl I'm gonna get together all the ingredients and then I'll be right back on the voiceover and we're gonna go through this step by step on how I make my Ghana sugar bread so before you want to start to do anything in the kitchen you just want to check around to make sure the surfaces are all pretty clean um, especially when you're making bread you're gonna need that countertop space um, because it's a lot of ingredients and you're going to need space to kind of knead the bread the right way just to activate the yeast. So I have my KitchenAid stand mixer here and I've made sure all the attachments are uh, that I'm going to need are in. It's just one, the kneading attachment. And some of you might remember this frame from my Dollar Tree haul. This is the kitchen is the heart of the home of picture frame that I picked up. I still keep it in the kitchen as a decorative item. So here we are back and we have assembled all of our ingredients as you can see. So starting from this side, we have our drying rack and that's just what we're gonna put the bread on so that it can cool off after we take it out of the oven. We have our mixing bowl for our dry ingredients. We have uh, the active dry yeast right over here and we have the cups, the mixing cups we're going to use um, and we also have a baster so that we can baste the, so that we can baste the bread with uh, butter once it's done baking so that it softens up and doesn't um, harden over time. Then we have warm water, not hot, to activate the yeast. Then we have our salt. Uh, grated nutmeg vanilla extract we have one egg uh, we have our measuring spoons we have our unsalted stick of butter our carnation our evaporated milk and then we move on over here we have the pan in which we're going to be baking in we have a the flour that we're going to be used measuring out that's all uh, uh, bread flour and we have a canister of sugar we also have our rolling pin and we have our pan to spray our pan so that it does not stick uh, to the pan when we bake the bread we're also going to probably line it with a little bit of flour after we spray it with pan Comment down below if you're one of those people that open your milk like exaggerated like this or is it just me? Guys, make sure you try this recipe out and comment down below and let me know how it turns out. So this recipe yields one loaf of bread. We're going to need one egg, a quarter cup of sugar, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, 2.5 cups of all-purpose or bread flour, a fourth a cup of evaporated milk, a quarter teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, three fourths a cup of warm water, one and one fourth teaspoon of active dry yeast, one teaspoon of grated nutmeg, one and one fourth teaspoon of salt. We're gonna start preparation for making the yeast mixture. So we're mixing the warm water because the yeast needs warm water in order to be activated. If it's too hot, it's not gonna work. And if it's too cold, it's not going to work. I'm going to add the yeast in there. And then we already measured out our sugar. 
I'm gonna just take a teaspoon of that and I'm going to put the sugar in there so the yeast, the yeast can thrive. I'm gonna mix it, stir it really well, get all the contents on the side of the glass as well. And that's how it looks when it's well mixed. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover my mixture with this towel and it's gonna stand for about 10 minutes. So now we're gonna get ready to mix our dry ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the flour as indicated. I'll put the instructions for the details for the measurements in the description down below. Um, you can use uh, the flat side of the uh, butter knife to go ahead and just get it as exact as possible. Um, the extra that I'm dumping into the bowl, I'm going to use it to put it on the counter when I need the bread. I'm not going to discard that, so it will come in handy. So we've already measured out one cup at this point, and we're going to measure out another cup. So altogether, we really ended up using a two point five cups of the flour for this uh, dry uh, ingredient mixture. Do keep in mind that if you want two loaves of bread, you simply just double this recipe. At this time, I don't think we needed two loaves of bread, so one was enough. So the dry ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and add half a cup of sugar, and then we're gonna go ahead and add a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now some salt. Okay, so that's it for the dry ingredients. our eggs, our carnation milk, and our vanilla extract. Now we're going to whisk everything together. You don't have to since everything is going in a mixing bowl, but I just feel it's less uh, mixing time with the stand mixer. So I go ahead and I whisk every, everything together before I put it into the uh, standing KitchenAid mixer. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix all the dry ingredients in the stand mixer. I'm gonna go ahead and have the KitchenAid stand mixer on low speed. That way the flour doesn't go all over my counter. I'm gonna attach the dough attachment and lock it in place for safety. And then I'm gonna start it out on low.
we're gonna slowly add in the yeast mixture to our um, egg, nutmeg, and other wet ingredients. Now that we've added all our ingredients, our wet and dry ingredients, the powder part and then the moist part, they're gonna combine, the KitchenAid stand mixer is gonna combine it into one piece of dough. Um, you'll know it's done because the dough attachment, all the dough that's made is going to adhere to the attachment in one piece. If you are using the stand mixer, the KitchenAid, it should take about five minutes to mix. You might want to start off at this kind of speed while the flour in there is still separated and then increase your speed after some time. I'd say about two and a half minutes. You might want to increase the speed a little bit. Um, if you're doing this by hand with a a, a spatula and a bowl, I would recommend that you mix this for about 10 minutes. And if you can look into our mixer, it's starting to really mix well. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and butter um, a mixing bowl on the side because this is what I'm gonna go ahead and put the completed dough into so that we can tuck it away in a warm place for about an hour. Now you see that the dough is really coming along and it's adhering to the dough making attachment. We went ahead and we removed the dough from our stand mixer and made it into like a ball. Um, I needed it a little bit, but I'm going to need it a little bit more later. So now we're just going to prepare this to put into the bowl, the mixing bowl, so that we can store it away. The bowl that we had previously buttered um, so that the dough doesn't stick to the, the bowl when we are ready to take it out. You're going to coat all sides of the dough in that butter so that it doesn't stick to the paint, the mixing bowl. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put um, saran wrap over it. We want to reach for a damp, clean kitchen towel as well. And once you have that on hand, you're going to go ahead and place that kitchen towel over our bowl. And then you're going to put it in a warm place for it, give it a chance for it to rise. Now we're going to coat the pan that we're going to bake the bread in. You can either use butter and baste it with butter or you can use some sort of a cooking spray. Either way is the same. Just make sure if you use butter, it's unsalted butter. Then we're going to put a few, uh, a little, about a few tablespoons of the flour to coat the bottom of the um, baking pan so that the bread does, it's easy to come out and it doesn't stick when we're ready to take it out. So now it's been an hour and we took it out of our warm place. And as you can see, the dough has already risen a little. I'm gonna go ahead and flour my surface, my clean surface, and I'm gonna knead the bread again and then um, use the rolling pin to roll it. And then I'm going to form the log, the famous log shape that you see uh, most Ghana sugar bread has. So you kind of press into it, you're pulling your tug, and then you can go over it with the rolling pin. Um, as you can see, I'm no expert at this, but it still comes out tasty and uh, looks presentable enough for me to eat. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do the roll at this point. Now, as I fold it over and I start the roll process, I press and then I pinch and then I 
I straighten it out a little bit so that it looks more like the roll that is made prior to baking the bread. The struggle is real, guys. Also remember that after the one hour of the bread rising, you're removing the air pockets out of the, uh, the dough as opposed to kneading it like we did the first time. So we place our bread in the baking pan and cover with saran wrap and a towel and put it in a warm place for another hour. After one hour, we took it out and then we have a aluminum pan full of water. We're going to place that in our oven and then we're going to preheat our oven to 325. We're placing the aluminum um, pan in there because the water, when it boils, it's going to create a moist environment in which we're going to need when we bake our bread. So now it's been an hour. We're removing the towel over the uh, bread dough and the saran wrap. Our oven is at the perfect temperature. So we're going to put in our bread into the oven, close it 30 minutes. You can see our beautiful bread is baking. At this point, the house smells exactly like a bakery. The aroma is amazing. So I took the bread out, placed it on a cooling rack, basted it with a little bit of melted butter. You want to be careful to make sure that the butter is unsalted. I'm going to go ahead and cover it with a clean towel and let it cool for 20 minutes. Twenty minutes later, we took off the towel and we have our beautiful bread. We're going to go ahead and cut into it a first slice. And as you can see, this bread is has a wonderful texture. It is cooked well. We're going to go ahead and give it a taste test. We spread some butter on it. You don't need the butter because the bread tastes good all without it. All the nutmeg and the flavors really came together. You can just take a look at how the bread looks close up. Very filling piece of bread. I got these bread bags off of Amazon. It comes with a tie. I thought they were really cute and it was a good way to store my homemade bread. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. The bread is already cooled and I'm going to tie up the bag. I'm going to set it up for overnight and then um, probably in the morning we're going to go ahead and have us a piece of bread with some porridge and eggs. A real weekend, you know, hearty breakfast at home. Now, this bread recipe is really amazing because sometimes you just check your pantry and you really run out of bread and you just don't want to go out and buy some. You could just stay home and you can just use this recipe. So now the next morning is come has come and here's the porridge that was made. Let me know, comment down below if you guys want a recipe for this porridge as well. I'm going to go ahead and have a serving of it, about two ladles. And I'm going to open the bread. It's still good texture. It's still holding up. And I'm going to slice into it for breakfast. Guys, make sure you have a bread knife. I'm telling you, a game changer. A bread knife to cut bread. It slices the bread so nice. It doesn't mess up the shape of the bread. And it is perfect. So now look at that texture of the bread. You can tell this is a really hearty home cooked Ghana sugar bread. Amazing. And it tastes so delicious. We're just going to have a slice because that's all we need right now. I'm going to put it away. The rest of it, I'm going to start to butter it. You can butter it with you can use butter, you can use almond butter, you can use peanut butter, you can use jam, you can use um, honey. But if I use honey, I like the 
organic honey, the one that's solid at room temperature. Um, you can put whatever spread you want on it or you can just eat it just like that. There are truly some really amazing spices like the nutmeg in it that it just makes it all come together and you don't really need any spreads on it at all. So now I'm just going to plate up my hearty weekend meal. Just a couple tablespoons, two tablespoons of carnation milk on the porridge. And you can see the sausage is on there with some eggs and some black pepper. Guys, comment down below how you how this recipe comes out if you try it. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like this video. Bye!